Hello and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton and welcome to another news video. Um, yeah, this one's more of a video that's basically going to be a takeover special. Um, a lot of news coming up about the takeovers, if you see me looking over at this direction. It's because there's going to be a lot of reading in this video, to put it simply. So we're going to start off um, uh, with Andy Bell and George Downing have lodged a bid to take over Everton from Farhan Mashiri. The bid is backed by MS Dell, who reportedly have a $120 billion fortune. Mashiri is reviewing bids and will grant exclusivity to a bidder in the next few days. That comes from Kava from Sky Sports. Um, to follow on from that, uh, DFO Management, formerly SMD, with Michael Dell associated, the founder, chairman, CEO of Dell Technologies, worth an estimated $100 billion. Uh, with large financial investments are also invested in getting involved or interested in getting involved so they are associated with bell and downing who have the funds in place this is again from sky who have the funds in place to buy Everton and are ready to spend a huge portion of their own fortunes on the deal their plan is to restore Everton to former glories and put them on solid financial footing while also the two have opened a company together called toffee ventures limited uh downing and bell are very well known to be Everton fans, and if I have a little look down here, um, Downing and Bell under Blythe Capital were the security agents for the one hundred and fifty-eight million dollar loan that MSP gave Everton. Bell and Downing are now competing with MSP to possibly buy the club. So I think it's good in the idea of having two Evertonians in control of the club. And there are rumours that other companies, which we'll get to in a second don't want a controlling stake in Everton so I can see the idea of preferring someone who wants to take full control and you know talk the big one of restoring a club to his former glory is that and you know removing the lot of debts that are in the club being able to get us in a position where we can actually sign players and maybe increase the optimism around the club is something that again it's hard to really give a true opinion on this that isn't very good nice cool because in the end we don't know enough yet uh, the news isn't solid enough, but a company backed by Dell, one of the biggest computing companies in the world, and Dell do a ton of other things now, you know, an over a $100 billion fortune, that doesn't mean we're worth $100 billion all of a sudden, but it does mean that maybe there will be investment in the club, and possible, you know, if improvements are seen, there's a reason to invest in the club, but again, I'm not some financial expert, I'm not the ESC, I'm not anything like that, just going off a fan's perspective of what I see, it's a good move for the club and it will get us out of this position where now hopefully with two fans in important roles in the club, it will also mean two people that understand football more, that understand maybe letting a director of football do his job, maybe not having past problems where we're having super agents control the transfers we make. And then all of a sudden, just having a new owner has so many positives and having two Evertonians with a huge company backing them who are also, you know, not exactly, you know, low on funds themselves it looks in a situation where the club's on the up and having so many interested parties again it's only a positive for us because it means you know it looks like we are going to get those new owners and if we move on uh a cap george downing and andy bell msp sports capital john texter and an unnamed american group are all battling to take over everton that's also from sky sports news as i previously mentioned having so many interested parties is only a good thing because it does also mean that maybe one come it will mean they have to make more promises to confirm the takeover. Besides just money, you can see people promising an amount of investment in the club. And again, that's only a positive for us because it means it benefits the club. It means more money may be pumped into the club because clubs are going to um, these investors are going to have to outbid each other. Again, I'm not the ask. I'm not some financial expert. But I am hoping the people trying to help sell Everton are trying to make sure that promises are made in place that the club will be invested in compared to you know the last few years of Mashiri where we, he's dug us in a hole and not just left us there but you know he's thrown himself in the hole with us in a sense but um speaking of ACAP who are a major lender two seven 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 partners have made a proposal to invest in Everton ACAP and a partner firm have put forward a plan that would see them refinance all of Everton's existing debt and take a non-controlling equity state that comes from David Hellier I don't really can't I can't see any interest in that because it means Mashiri still has an important role at the club, and I don't think anyone wants that. I don't think anyone wants Mashiri still in any sort of control at this club, or anyone involved with Mashiri. I think a lot of fans just want Mashiri out, and they just want this new these new people in charge who can really, you know, who can start a new life for Everton, who can resuscitate some life into the club. Still having Mashiri lingering around in the background, I don't see a positive in that at all. There is also advanced interest from a global consortium of wealthy investors in taking over the club. It's still unclear what option Farhad Mashiri favours, but an announcement is believed to be in, 
Imminent. That's from Matt Slater. Um, this one's... I've seen a lot of rumours about this one that it's Qatari Investment. Again, Qatari Investment's one of those where it, there's a lot of promise in it because it's almost like you see it with PSG and the guy who wanted to take over Man United were guaranteeing investment in the club. That's only a positive, but we don't exactly know the full details yet. So, and again, the announcement's meant to be imminent, which is great. You know, it hopefully means, you know, we can get this part over with early in the transfer window because I don't know how realistic it is, but there is a, probably a chance we're going to be placed under a transfer embargo while ownership's swapping. So, getting this done earlier on in the summer, probably during the Euros, meaning after the Euros, we can go straight into business, signing some players. Um, I know we're still in some uh, PFA, FFP troubles, but, you know, I, again, some sales could go. Uh, we could see Onana leave, which then means we can replace. And then maybe in January or more likely next season, we can actually see some investment in the club. Um, for some context on John Texter, John Texter is the co-owner of Crystal Palace, who needs to share his uh, shell. You probably read this a million times. needs to sell his shares in Crystal Palace to then take over Everton. But he has also asked the Premier League if he could... You know, if it's possible to buy shares in Everton while still holding Palace shares that he wanted to sell. Um, Texter, I don't really, I'm not really too sure about. Um, again, I've seen videos of him and he seems passionate, which is always fun. But again, you probably want the people with probably the best business brain and also just the money to put in place. You see how much of an impact money can have, but you can also see the detriment it has. You look at like PSG, how much money PSG have spent, but also then just not won anything. Uh, you, but then you look at the Man City side of things, where a ton of investment and the right people in charge can, yeah, and a little bit of cheating can, you know, impact you massively. But if we continue to move on, I again, I am sorry, there's a lot of reading I'm having to do, but that's what it is today. It's a, a big thing on the takeover. Hopefully, we'll get more concrete news soon but Everton are on also on the verge of announcing that a new group has entered into exclusive negotiations to take over the club I mentioned that earlier but hopefully over the next coming days we're going to see that one group has gone into exclusive negotiations which hopefully unlike the 777 means we can get it done have it finalized and again move on to possibly signing players maybe having some new people putting roles at the club but again again it's nothing confirmed yet there's so many parties involved now that I can imagine the favourites right now are going to be Bell and Downing due to being Evertonians and probably my favourites as well just because of that. But you also, you've you seen it work at uh, Brighton with, I forgot his name, but uh, Brighton's owner, Brighton fan, and it's worked, look, it's worked out well for them and the model they've taken over. But again, with a, with a club in the position we're in and the history we have, you don't really want to see us taking a Brighton method, but I could also understand why we'd do that. Um, again, um, Going on, back to Bell and George from Matt Slater. Uh, Bell and Downing have been trying to pull a deal together with the sport of Zeus Capital and BTD and MSD partners. That also comes from Matt Slater. So it seems like Bell and Downing are really trying to find those backers. It seems now they've found them in Dell, but it seems like they have been really looking around for those people that can back them to take over the club. And again, if they're willing to invest a heavy amount of their fortune into it too, there's no reason why they're just going to throw money away. They're going to want to the best of the club for them and of course for for the club in general because the more we rise in the table the more money we earn the possibility of you know European football and you more money a deep cup run and you more money higher league position and you more money and of course there's television rights that earn you just a ridiculous amount of money which is why you always again you see the teams that get relegated with the parachute payments and also have those TV rights from the previous year why they're able to just bounce back up now but if we finally get us into two little bits of transfer news uh, this one comes with Dan McDonnell Everton remain interested in Leon and Ireland defender Jake O'Brien Borussia Dortmund are interested and are considering a move this summer AC, AC Milan are also keen uh, O'Brien is one where I would be interested in it as I don't know about for a replacement for Brown Point. I don't know if he's left footed or not but I have heard that he's been a huge part in Leon's turnaround in the second half of the season, where they went from bottom of the league to, I believe, getting European football, like probably Euro I think it was Europa League, finishing sixth or fifth. But with teams like Milan and Dortmund involved, we can't, we don't have the spending power to outbid them. And I'd probably prefer a centre half who's got some experience playing in in England. I believe Jacob Bryan's from Crystal Palace's uh, was at Crystal Palace before being sold to Leon, so that's where you can see the interest in it. But again. 
I'm not too sure on it. I don't know the prices involved, but I think for a decent price, it would be a good transfer or a possibility of a loan with an option to buy. Um, I don't know the financial situation Leon are in exactly right now, but we're not exactly in much of a better one. And the last bit of news today, um, Everton are interested in winger Karim, in Celtic winger Karamoko Dembele after a fantastic season on loan at Blackpool. That comes from Jordan Jones of the Blackpool Gazette. Um, Karamoko Dembele is someone who, again, we've been hearing about since he was 16 and looks like one of those players who um, maybe didn't fit the potential he'd been billed at. But again, he's only tw he's still only 21 now. Eight goals, 13 assists in 29 starts in League One. Uh, again, depends on the fee that would be involved. But West Ham, Nottingham Forest, Brentford, Southampton are also interested along with Leeds and Middlesbrough in the Championship. Um, again, I think there's teams there that have more spending power than us that have more money available to them than us. But I think Dembele could probably see a more an e a clear path through to the first team with us. So we'll have to see where that goes. But thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Everton Newsfeed, where you can see all of this news in the next upcoming days about the transfer news and about these takeover, where we hopefully should find out who is going to get those exclusive negotiation rights soon. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Callum Brennan Free, and I will see you all for the next video that I'm on or possible live stream. Goodbye, everyone.